Thank you, David. And now we'll bring to the microphone Lieutenant Colonel Robert Bowman. Thank you. As a pilot, I concur with Colonel Gap's analysis of the gross improbabilities in the official conspiracy theory. And as an old interceptor pilot, I share his puzzlement over the lack of interceptors that fateful morning. As a career military officer, I'd like to concentrate on the enormous harm the official 9-11 conspiracy theory has done to our military establishment and to the people in it. Using 9-11 as the excuse, the multinational corporations and bankers have used our brave young troops as cannon fodder in their corporate wars of aggression. They have systematically taken away our constitutional rights, including those of our military personnel. The entire war on terror is phony. And it would be even if you believed the ludicrous official conspiracy theory about 9-11. Both wars were planned before 9-11. The war of aggression against Afghanistan was in retaliation for the Taliban refusing UNICAL rights to build a gas pipeline across Afghanistan to get trillions of dollars worth of gas from the Caspian Sea to their tankers in the ocean. The military leadership knew it had nothing to do with the Taliban harboring Osama bin Laden. The Taliban had offered to give us Osama for trial, but the Bush administration ignored the offer for two reasons. One, they had no evidence against Osama, and according to the FBI, still don't. And two, the war had already been planned in detail to secure that gas pipeline. The war against Iraq was outlined in the PNAC document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, published before George W. Bush even became president. Its purpose was to provide a military staging base from which to control the entire Middle East and its tens of trillions of dollars worth of oil and gas. Now the authors of that document admitted in it that the American people would never go along with their plans unless there was a catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, unquote. Well, 9-11 provided that event. Yet they were unable to tie Iraq to 9-11, no matter how hard they tried. So they came up with a new excuse, WMD, weapons of mass destruction. It is here that we in the military saw through their charade. They had us mass 150,000 troops in one small area in Kuwait awaiting the start of shock and awe. If our military commanders had even the slightest thought that Saddam Hussein might have had even one WMD, they never would have deployed their troops so that they could be wiped out in a single attack with one WMD. The truth is that our government knew there were no WMD in Iraq. Our people in the military were put in a horrible position, either sacrifice their career and their freedom by refusing orders, or knowingly participate in a war of aggression against their oath of office and the Nuremberg principles enshrined in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So we have two corporate wars of aggression. Wars in which we are making the same mistake as in my war, Vietnam. We are fighting the people who live there. 
What has been the result? About 5,500 of our finest have died. The lives of 40,000 of our injured soldiers will never be the same. Tens of thousands of our young men and women have severe psychological problems because of what they have seen and what they have done. Hundreds of thousands have been poisoned by depleted uranium and will suffer lives of pain and disability and will father thousands of children with severe birth defects. Our military services are depleted and demoralized. The VA system is underfunded and overwhelmed. The National Guard and Reserves have been subjected to tour after tour, disrupting lives for even the lucky ones who return unscathed. Jobs have been lost, homes have been foreclosed, marriages have been destroyed, children have been estranged, and for what? We have alienated our friends around the world and made new enemies. We have created thousands of new recruits for Osama bin Laden, whether he's alive or dead. And we have further endangered the American people and all because of 9-11. You know, there's massive evidence of a cover-up with respect to 9-11 itself. I've spoken with both Governor Kane and Congressman Hamilton, the co-chairs of the commission, and they both say that there are outright falsehoods in the final report. Never mind all the omissions. The report over which they had no control. It was written in the Bush White House by Philip Zelikow. Now when you combine this with the confiscation of videotapes, audio tapes, black boxes and other evidence by the FBI, it is clear that regardless of who was responsible for 9-11, the subsequent cover-up was itself a conspiracy involving elements of the Bush White House and the intelligence establishment. To prevent further 9-11s, we must get to the truth about all those involved in the last one. You know, the American people have never been told who was really responsible for 9-11. Dedicated researchers like some we've heard today have proven that it could not have happened the way the Bush administration said it did. Hijacked airliners do not fly around for an hour and 40 minutes without being intercepted unless our air defense system was deliberately sabotaged. And 19 Arabs with box cutters couldn't have done that. Indestructible black boxes, and by the way they're not really black, they're bright orange, but never mind. Indestructible black boxes do not evaporate in the same fire from which an unharmed passport floats to the street below. Airliners, all of whose parts carry identifying numbers, do not crash without leaving a shred of evidence as to what they were. You know, the truth about 9-11 is that after nine years, we still don't know the truth about 9-11, and we should, and so should the families of victims. And let us always remember the victims of 9-11 include not just the roughly 3,000 people who lost their lives that day, but the 5,500 military personnel who have lost their lives in the Afghan and Iraqi wars, as well as the hundreds of thousands of innocent Afghan and Iraqi civilians. All of these victims and their families cry out for a new independent investigation of 9-11. Only when the official myth is exposed and the truth told will the wars and occupations end. The creation of new victims stopped and our military returned to its constitutional task of protecting our borders and our people, not the financial interests of multinational corporations. 
This one change in military mission, eliminating the mission of protecting the global financial interests of multinational corporations, will allow us to greatly enhance our national security and reduce the defense budget by 80%. But it's not going to happen until people learn the truth about 9-11. Only then will people understand that our security is not enhanced by sending our working class youth around the world to kill the sons and daughters of working people in other countries. Only then will people understand that our security is not enhanced by sending our children to the Middle East to kill Arabs so the oil companies can profit from selling the oil under their sand. No more battleship mains, no more Pearl Harbors, no more Gulfs of Tonkin, no more incubators in Kuwait, no more 9-11s, no more false flag attacks, no more lies. As a 100% disabled combat veteran, I say the best thing our government can do for us is to quit making more of us. But how do we get our government to support what's left of our troops by bringing them home while they're still alive? How do we achieve a new constitutional foreign and military policy? We the people must reassert our sovereignty and the key to doing that is 9-11 truth. We must expose, indict, convict, and incarcerate the liars, the murderers, and the traitors, and then replace them with patriots devoted to the truth and to service to the people. Seek the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Thank you very much.